Beer Seekers, I'm Nick. As of this video going live, Intel has finally lifted the lid on their 10th generation CPUs and the new Z490 platform to go along with it. So I decided, you know what? Uh, we have a, a whole stack of Z490 boards. You probably have like 15 of them or something crazy like that. It's been really busy here. That's why we haven't been uploading much. We've been working on all this stuff in the background. I figured that, you know what, I'm going to show you guys the most over-engineered and probably going to be the most over-engineered Z490 board, the Aorus Extreme Water Force. So, let's take a look at it and uh, yeah, just remember guys, it's not a review. Let's do it. Before we kick this video off, I just want to let you guys know that this is not a review. This is just an overview so you can get an idea of what comes in the box with this completely over-engineered 16-phase Z490 monoblock water-cooled motherboard. And yeah, that's basically it. It's completely not a review. We're not going to be talking about thermals, testing, none of that. Also because we're not allowed to do that right now. We'll have to wait for that for a later date. All we're allowed to do is share the details of the board itself and nothing to do with Intel's new CPU. So with all that said, uh, yeah, let's do a motherboard thing. It's been a while. I feel a bit rusty, but this is going to be good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the time has finally come for some 10th gen Intel goodness, the Z490 Aorus Extreme Water Force. Let's get it out of the box. There is a lot to have a look at. This is quite a, uh, a large package. There is a lot of components. So we're going to go through every single thing with this motherboard. Just, uh, yeah, let's start off with the Aorus Fan Commander, obviously. Now we've covered this in the past. Basically what it is, it's a little RGB control box that allows you to plug in all of your fans, all of your RGB lighting. It's got an extra USB hub built in. It is one of the best RGB controllers on the market. However, you cannot buy these separately. I just want to make that clear because we do get questions about it. No, you cannot buy it separately. So yeah, it does all of the RGB things basically. All right, let's take a look at some of the cables and stuff that come with it. It's got basically every single cable you could possibly imagine. 12 volt RGB cables, five volt addressable cables, PWM connectors, absolutely everything you could possibly imagine for all of that RGB and fan goodness. There's also some thermal probes which allow you to probe thermals, basically to control fans and stuff based on locations of temperatures inside of your case. The next cable is the motherboard sync cable. This basically plugs into your motherboard, passes through the 12 volt RGB and the 5 volt addressable RGB and USB as well. Not only that, there is another USB 2.0 breakout cable just in case you wanted to plug some other stuff into this controller. There's also some Velcro or a straps for all of the cable management goodness so you can hide all your cables and make sure they don't explode out the side of your case. And there's also a SATA or SATA power extension cable now this is pretty good because this will allow you to put the controller anywhere in your case and not really worry about having a awkward SATA cable floating around it's also this documentation that basically shows you everything that I just showed you in this section of the video but let's move on okay Let's take a look at the monoblock itself. Now, this is a different monoblock design to what we saw with the other water force boards. That's the X299X and the Z391. But yeah, let's first take a look at the backing plate. Now, this is the mounting bracket that allows you to connect the water block to the motherboard, taking up some of the sockets mounting pressure. There's also an array of screws to mount M.2 drives and to actually fasten the monoblock to the motherboard. It is actually a lot better than the last one because there is less, which is always more. Okay, there's also some included thermal compound. Now this is Aorus' thermal compound. I've used this before. It's very similar to Noctua NTH1 in consistency, but I actually don't know who makes their thermal paste. Next up there is some replacement thermal pads. The monoblock does already have thermal pads on it, but you can replace them if you're going to be installing this motherboard a few times. And yeah, this is a nice touch and usually these boards have this type of stuff with it as well. There's also some washers. Now these are for isolating and what I mean by that is for electronic isolation so you don't short out anything on your motherboard. Please use these if you're going to be using this motherboard. Okay, let's take a closer look at that big monoblock. It is very, very heavy. Uh, it's heavier than all the other ones I've done and yeah, just don't drop it because, uh, especially don't drop it on your foot because it would really, really hurt. Okay, let's take a closer look. 
First off, we need to get that plastic out of the way so we can have a look at that beautiful design. All right, ooh, look at that. Ooh, everyone loves a good peel, right? I can't be the only one, but I really like peeling plastic off stuff. Okay, you'll notice that there are parallel inlet and outlet ports for the water to go into the monoblock. Now, the reason why they've done this, and this is becoming something that is more popular over the last probably two years, is people will be using distro plates. So now this motherboard is designed to be used with a distro plate having these type of fittings. It is a really elegant way of doing it and I like it. I just need more distro plates. You'll also notice there's cooling for the three M.2 slots as well, which is actually quite nice. Basically the way this works is with dissipating the heat over a larger surface area. It's a very elegant way to do this. You'll also notice that the chipset is actively cooled now I can tell you this for a fact, every other of the 15 other Z490 boards we've got do not have actively cooled chipsets. However, this does because why not? It's a water force board. As we flip the monoblock over, you can have a little bit of a look at the build quality. It is very, very nice. And as you can see, it has all of the thermal pads already pre-applied. I'm just taking a little bit of a look at the mounting points for the CPU socket itself. It's very similar to the old water force boards in this regard and yeah it should create more than enough mounting pressure and it is a very sturdy and rock solid design and it would have to be because this monoblock weighs a metric ton or not really but you get the idea now one other thing i wanted to mention as well is this board basically cools everything on the board including the 10 gigabit ethernet controller and that's what that bit right in front of you now is that's coming towards you that is cooling for the 10 gigabit ethernet controller. It's very, very nice. Okay, let's take another quick look. As you can see, the inlet and outlet ports are parallel for connecting it up to a distro plate. However, you don't actually need to connect it to a distro plate. And as we work our way down, you can see that the water flows down to the chipset as well, which also helps dissipate the heat across the M.2 slots as well. There's also an M.2 slot underneath the top of the water block is the bit that I'm showing right now. Okay, let's flip the block over just one more time so you can have another look at the layout for all of the thermal pads so you can get an idea of where all of the components sit and where the VRMs get cooled and all of that jazz. Yeah, this is basically for your enjoyment. Okay, let's get the board itself out of the way. But actually, we're not going to do that just yet. We're going to take a look at all of the other things that come with the board. And we'll take a look at the board right at the end. First up, we've got all of these stickers. These stickers to put stickers on your computer or on your wall or on your passport. I don't know. I would never use those stickers. Uh, next up, there is a breakout cable. Now, this is the front panel breakout cable because the motherboard itself does not have any front panel connectors, which I think is pretty good. And more motherboards should do this. There's also a Another USB 2.0 breakout cable. This is quite nice as well because it actually saves surface space on the board. There's also the G connector for the front panel cables as well, which is pretty standard for gigabyte boards. There's also a USB DAC. Now what this is, is this is a USB type C audio interface for your headphones or your speakers, which have an isolating circuit to give you clean output. It's very nice. Let's take a look at some of the documentation. There's the multilingual installation guide. This is pretty standard stuff. They probably just copy and paste this from another motherboard. And this is just to help you get the CPU installed in the socket. Next up is this. And yes, they finally listened to me. In fact, I lied. They've always been doing this with their extreme boards, but there's a USB stick instead of a CD or a DVD for all of the drivers. Next up is the Water Force motherboard manual. Now this is basically to help you with the layout of what's in the BIOS with a few overclocking tips and yeah just a general layout of where all the menus are and what they all do. Okay let's take a look at the rest of the stuff. Now there's some more thermal probes in here to probe the thermals. Basically the idea of these is to, to put it somewhere in the case so it knows how hot it is in that section and etc. There's also a microphone that allows you to control the fan speed with the sound of the fans which is actually quite nice too. And in the RGB fusion box, there is a bunch of RGB cables. There's, There's some, some addressable RGB cables and 12 volt RGB cables, the standard stuff. There's also six braided SATA cables or SATA cables, depending on where you are in the world. This is actually quite a nice addition, but I suspect people who use this board will not be using SATA drives. Uh, there's also some more Aorus Velcro straps so you can cable manage to your heart's content. 
If we pop open the last flap, what we find are the Wi-Fi antennas for the built-in Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi AX built into this motherboard. Very nice big shark fin antennas. Okay. Ladies and gents, the time has come. It's time to take a closer look at the board itself. Now, just a bit of a heads up. This is the same layout as the extreme non-water force board. However, obviously this has got a mono block that lays on top of it. And we're gonna be showing the extreme board uh, in a couple days or so, we do have one of those too. First up, we got the BIOS switches for the dual BIOS setup and the front panel audio connector. This is actually hidden underneath a flap. There's the front panel USB breakout cable, a 12 volt and a 5 volt RGB header, a USB 3.0 header. There's also six SATA connectors for, or SATA connectors for your spinning rust or 2.5 inch SSDs. There's a USB type C header towards the back of the board here. There's some more addressable RGB and 12 volt RGB connectors. There's a front panel breakout cable. Now this is the cable I was talking about with there not being any separate front panel connectors. There's also a 24 pin power connector to send all of the juice to your brand new board and five PWM fan connectors, which is very, very nice. Above that, there's a reset switch and a power switch. Now this is basically if you're doing stuff like LN2 and whatnot and you're bench testing. So yeah, nice addition for this board. Next up along the top of the board, there's an OC button button that will allow you to do a one button press overclock. There's also a diagnostic LED screen, a CPU fan header and a PWM connector for the pump, which you probably will not be using on this board. There's also two eight pin EPS power connectors and given what I know about 10th gen Intel CPUs, you're gonna need both of these <laughs> and another PWM fan connector. There's also three M.2 slots, which you can see quite clearly. These live underneath the mono block and there's three PCIe slots. Now, the top PCIe slot is by 16. The next one down is by eight and the next one below that is by eight. And now, there's a little bit of a uh, thing going around and it's, it's fact, I'm gonna confirm this is fact, that Z490 boards do support PCIe Gen 4 in a limited capacity. And speaking of Z490, here's a closer look at the chipset. And as I mentioned when we took a look at the monoblock, the chipsets with Z490 boards are typically not actively cooled, but however, this is a water force board, so of course Gigabyte is going to actively cool it with water. Why not? Z490 also supports DDR4 memory, so if you're upgrading from an older system, basically from, I'm gonna say around 2016 and up, your memory will be supported, and there's four slots in total. Now let's take a look at Intel's new socket. It is the LGA 1200 socket. There are 1200 pins on the socket itself. You'll notice that the mounting holes are the same as the 115X socket, but there's one major difference, and we'll take a look at this now. The locating tabs are moved to the bottom of the socket, whereas older 11.5x sockets actually had these locating tabs at the top of the socket. So these sockets are not electrically compatible at all. In fact, you can't even fit an older chip in these sockets anymore. So they have changed that. Okay, it's 2020, so we might as well talk about the VRM and power delivery. Now, this board uses a 16-phase digital VRM setup. It also has a 90 amp smart power stage and also a tantalum polymer capacitor array. You might not understand what all that means, but basically it means that there's more than enough juice to power a 10th gen CPU. That's basically it. We don't need to go into it more than that. All right, let's take a look at that re-IO. There's a Q flash button and a clear CMOS button. There's two antenna connectors for the Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi AX. There's a 2.5 gigabit ethernet adapter, some USB 3.2 and some Thunderbolt 3. There's also a 10 gigabit ethernet adapter, some USB 3.2 and some Thunderbolt 3 as well. Some more USB, some HDMI for integrated graphics if you're gonna be using that, which you won't with this motherboard. Some more USB 3.2 connectors and the 7.1 digital surround sound and an integrated I.O. shield, which is pretty standard on most boards over the last few years. Uh, it's time, ladies and gents. Let's take a look at that sweet RGB and B-roll.
hope you guys enjoyed the overview and the first look at the Aorus Z490 Extreme Water Force. It's an absolute beast of a board, completely over-engineered, and I know I've said that multiple times, but it really is crazy for a desktop board. And like I said previously, we can't discuss anything to do with the new Intel CPUs at all. Uh, we're just not allowed to do that just yet. You'll have to wait. Don't worry, when we're allowed to talk about it, we'll be doing all of the normal benchmarking and all the normal testing that we usually do when a new CPU comes out, no, a series of new CPUs comes out. So that will be coming, so sit tight. As for pricing with this board, there is no pricing available just yet. There's no word on availability. There is absolutely no information about this board because I'm pretty sure that uh, I don't think many reviewers actually got their hands on this board for the announcement and launch of Z490. I think this is one of the only ones in existence at the moment. So yeah, there's not a lot of information. I did ask Gigabyte for all that info, but even they don't know how much it's gonna cost yet. So I, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll update you guys when I have more info, but for now, that's basically it for the video. What do you reckon, Claire? It's pretty insane looking, right? It's, it's a lot. It's a lot of motherboard. It's super heavy. You could, uh, you could literally hurt someone uh, quite gravely if you were to um, hit them with this motherboard. Or, actually, I was thinking about it before. I was picking up the motherboard box. It was so heavy. I'm like, if I drop this on myself, I'm going to be in a world of pain because it is legitimately that heavy. And if you guys liked the music you heard here, sorry to just sidetrack, but yeah, I make all the music here. You can grab it over on our Patreon. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Consider hitting the join button or getting early access to our content on Floatplan. Although all of these, these videos that uh, for like releases and like launch embargoes and all that stuff, that doesn't go early to Floatplan because we're not allowed to do that, so this video will obviously go live at the same time on Floatplane. However, all the rest of our motherboard videos will be coming early to Floatplane after this first one. Anyway, if you liked the video, yeah, I already said you know what to do already. Thanks for watching, I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek. And if you're wondering why the monoblock isn't sitting on the board all the way, it's because I haven't fastened it. It's literally just sitting there for your viewing pleasure. Thanks for watching.